Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist. And today I wanted to talk to you about exercise and the role of exercise on the heart. Um, you know, a ton of people ask me about exercise and a lot of people worry because, as you know, when you exercise, you're placing more demand on the heart. You're asking more of your heart. And a lot of people worry about whether by exercising they could be doing some damage to their heart, particularly if they have been diagnosed with a heart condition or um, if they have symptoms which they, which they worry may be coming from the heart, okay? Um, so uh, the first thing to say is when we look at medicine, there are only two things um, you hope to achieve as a doctor. You want to make your patient feel better, i.e. improve their quality of life. And secondly, you want them to live longer, i.e. improve their length of life. And when we look at all the uh, technological advances, all the amazing expensive medications out there, um, there are very few that do both, make you live longer and make you feel better. Um, some make you live longer, but they also come with side effects. Others make you feel better, but they have no real role in terms of making you live longer. So when you have some kind of strategy which allows you both, um, and in, um, in terms of exercise, it's certainly uh, regular exercise undoubtedly makes you feel better and undoubtedly makes you live longer. And to a large extent, the benefits are greater than the majority of medications available, okay? Uh, so um, exercise is extremely good for the heart, all right? And that, that's true for people who have healthy hearts, and it is also true for people who have diseased hearts. Exercise is always good. However, there are a few caveats. The first thing is, that if you find that you have symptoms which get worse with exercise, then it's important, A, to listen to your symptoms and not to continue exercising if you're getting symptoms, and then to seek medical advice, to get checked out, to try and identify what the problem is, and hopefully once you've gotten it sorted out, there's no reason why you can't go back to exercising, okay? That's the first thing. So if you're getting chest discomfort on exercise, then it's a good idea not to do those exercises that cause your chest discomfort. Uh, equally well, if you're doing something and you're, you get chest discomfort, then it's better to try and stop and listen to your heart. So your heart has a way of telling you if you're doing too much or if the exercise could be harmful to it. You simply won't be able to do it. So people who have angina, i.e. narrowings in their heart arteries, they will often come to me and they'll say, I walk a certain distance, I get the discomfort, then I have to stop. Well, that's their heart telling them, don't exercise anymore because um, I'm not getting as much blood as I want. Similarly, people who are breathless, they'll say, I can walk a certain distance, but after a certain distance, I get profoundly breathless. In those people, again, I would say, well, get checked out because you know if you are getting your symptoms on exertion, if you're getting your symptoms on exercise, then it's better to get them checked out. And in some ways, exercise can be very useful in those people because it can be the first time when they start noticing their symptoms. If you're sedentary, things have to get really bad to start affecting you when you're not doing anything. Uh, but if you have something subtle going on in the background, the first time you'll notice it is during exercise. And that's why exercise can be extremely useful because it can give you a clue of something going on. And if you get that clue, then you can seek help and get that sorted out, okay? Um, similarly, a lot of people I see have palpitations, you know, and they say, oh, you know, can I exercise? Would I do any harm to myself by exercising? Well, if your palpitations are more noticeable in exercise and okay at rest, then obviously get checked out. People with ectopic beats often say to me, um, am I doing myself harm by exercising? Do you think I'll drop down dead? And I'll say to them, well, are you getting your ectopics on exercise? A lot of people say, no, I get the fluttering or the ectopics or the mist beats at rest. I don't notice them so much on exercise. In which case, there's no reason why you shouldn't exercise. In fact, exercise is good. So that's the first thing to say. If your symptoms are worse on exercise, it's better not to exercise. 
but only temporarily until you get checked out and get treated for it. Okay. The second thing I would say is that it is never a good idea to do unaccustomed exercise. Okay. So if you haven't ever, or if you've been not doing any exercise, then I think it's a wrong thing to try and run a marathon first time out. I think you have to build up. Okay. You have to do some exercise, build up and train yourself. And then there's no reason why you can't do a higher level of exercise like a marathon, but you have to build up. It is the wrong strategy to just suddenly wake up one day and say, I'm going to go to the gym and start lifting 200 kilos. Um, because that's where unaccustomed exercise can be dangerous. But accustomed exercise, exercise that is gradual and uh, that you have trained for over a number of days or weeks is generally very good. Uh, the third thing I'd like to say is everything is good in moderation, okay? So whilst it's not good not to exercise, it's equally good not to go completely berserk. So there are some people, for example, who like to run ultra marathons, some people who do like, you know, crazy, um, crazy exercise because, you know, fell running and people will run for 40, 50 miles and, and that becomes their life. And I can understand why, because they enjoy it and that's fine. But in those people, uh, the heart can, um, over a period of time, start weakening. It can start misbehaving with uh, heart rhythm disturbances. Sometimes the heart can slow down and people require pacemakers. So if you're doing crazy levels of exercise, uh, then in the long run, that's not a great thing to do. But exercise in moderation, exercise that makes you feel uh, refreshed and makes you feel um, healthy and happy is always good. Let's talk about what the benefits are of exercise, okay? Um, well, it makes you feel better, and two, it definitely makes you live longer. And why? We know this because, for example, if you had a heart artery narrowing, let's say you have your heart artery and you've got a 90% narrowing, we know that if you can do nine minutes on the treadmill, okay, without having to stop, um, then in general, you will do far better in the long run compared to someone who can only do th three minutes or four minutes. So nine minutes is considered the magic mark. And if you can do more than nine minutes, you fall into a low risk category in general, despite what you may have. So someone who's got a 90% narrowing in one artery and can do nine minutes is going to be generally at a lower risk compared to a person who's got the same disease in the artery but can only do three minutes or four minutes, okay? So being able to do nine minutes on the treadmill and being able to do that on a regular basis is a really good sign because it tells you that your heart is generally healthy and it is generally able to cope. We also know that um, one of the important things is, for example, you, you're a fit man and suddenly, you know, you, you, you're told you need an operation because you've got some heart condition or something like that. How well you do after your operation, how well you do during and after your operation is highly dependent on how well you were before your operation, okay? So if you could do regular exercise, if you had a good exercise capacity, um, regardless of how big the operation is, in general, you would do better than someone who is sedentary, who is unable to, you know, do a good level of exercise. And that's why that's another benefit of exercise. Okay. Um, so I always say to my patients, you know, if you can do nine minutes on the treadmill, uh, uh, that is a really good sign in general, regardless of everything else. If you can do nine minutes, that's really good. And there have been some studies looking at survival of the fittest and testing the survival of the fittest theory. And there is no doubt that people who are able to do more do better than people who are uh, able to do less. So it's always a really good idea. It gives you a... Um, just by exercising and by being able to do more than nine minutes continuously um, day in, day out on a treadmill, for example, is a very good sign. Number two, if there is anything wrong, the first time you'll pick it up is during exercise, and that can be very helpful because someone can do something about it. Um, number three, um, you know, at the end of the day, what does the body want? What is health about? The he health, to my mind, is about getting lots of oxygen, uh, 
to its destination to your vital organs without much work that's what you want you want you you want your heart to be able to pump blood around you want uh, there to be lots of oxygen and you want that oxygen to get to where it needs to be i.e your vital organs um, with minimal effort now if you are having to apply lots of effort or if you're not able to get enough oxygen around then you get into a condition called inflammation because the equilibrium of the body starts getting disturbed okay and we know that the majority of conditions in the western world are in some way related to inflammation so we know um, diabetes is an inflammatory condition. We know hypertension can be an inflammatory condition. We know heart disease is an inflammatory condition. We know heart attacks are related to inflammation. We know heart failure is an inflammatory condition. We know heart rhythm disorders like atrial fibrillation are an inflammatory problem. Uh, even sometimes extra beats, ectopics, lots of ectopics can be a manifestation of inflammation. And exercise, is the most wonderful anti-inflammatory natural anti-inflammatory agent out there okay it reduces inflammation so if you if you are generally um, you know run down for example with the flu or something like that you watch you go out for a run run for about 20 30 minutes when you come back you'll feel better sometimes you shake it off just by going for a run and that is the anti-inflammatory effect of exercise and very few other man-made compounds have that much of a beneficial role on the body so in terms of anti-inflammatory effects exercise controls your allows your blood sugars to be controlled better it reduces obesity it reduces depression it reduces your blood pressure it reduces your risk of having an acute sudden heart attack people who have heart failure um, if they exercise some of them can actually come off the waiting list for heart transplantation it can be that effective regular exercise can be so effective that people who are deemed suitable or who are deemed needing of a transplant can sometimes come off the transplant list just because the exercise has helped them to that extent okay arrhythmias atrial fibrillation if you have atrial fibrillation you exercise regularly your atrial fibrillation will get less prevalent compared to someone who doesn't you will lose weight if you have underlying sleep apnea by losing the weight you will uh, your sleep apnea will get better which will then have a beneficial role on your arrhythmia like atrial fibrillation ectopics atrial fibrillation ex ex uh, sorry um, exercise is extremely good for ectopics it takes your mind off the ectopics um, it uh, reduces your inflammation levels and it will make you feel so much better so there are tons of really beneficial effects on exercise and i would always urge people to start exercising if you have symptoms that come on an exercise that is your clue go and get them checked out but then don't stop exercising get them sorted and then go back to exercise and as i say do it in moderation and remember try and avoid unaccustomed exercise but just doing regular daily exercise particularly cardiovascular exercise, particularly things like going on, on, on the treadmill are exceptionally good. Um, so uh, I hope this was helpful. Um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. Uh, this is my website and this is my Facebook page. So I'm really grateful um, to you all for uh, listening to my videos, for your complimentary remarks. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, Please don't hesitate to share it with your with your friends, um, and um, please do send me a message because I'll try my hardest to reply. All the best. Okay, take care.